Hey folks, Jarek here and welcome to Emberscape. By now you should know the drill. I have 10 pieces of Cretaceous aged ember around 100 million years old, all with insect inclusions and not just insects. Today we have some great diversity. We have bugs, ants, cockroaches, neuropteras and we have some botanical inclusions. Let's start from the nice and very transparent piece. And so the first one we will inspect is this very thin piece, very clear piece with an ant in it. The ant is either missing legs or the legs are curled and it's quite tiny. I would guess it is either Zygerimastica species or some sort of unidentified ant. But when I will do pictures, uh, maybe we will get a better identification. For now, I'm just amazed how well preserved it is and it even retains some of the color. It is either uh, bright brown or reddish accent. So yeah, let's get this baby under microscope and let's check uh, what, can, what kind of details can we see under magnification. This is a very interesting specimen for a few reasons. First one is the magnificent preservation in it. One of the suggestions for an ID is genus Camelosphetia. It is an extinct genus of ants and everything that extinct is more interesting in my eyes. And this suggestion was made when looking at interesting mandibles of this ant. They are very similar to that of a wasp. So if it is really a Camelosphetia ant, it is considered that this is an intermediate species between ants and wasps. As some of you might know, ants did evolve from the wasps, and this species retained mandibles that of a wasp. Very nice specimen, some of the legs are missing. Yeah, let's remove the plastilin and let's take another piece. And since we started from ants, let's take another one. In very different position, it has all the legs, even more. The color is different, it's black. Yeah, should look very nice. This one is even tinier, so maybe this one is Sigurimastica. While doing some photos, I found something interesting in the ant. Turns out it's not just the ant, there is one more inclusion. And yeah, wh what the hell is this? This microscopic bugger is a springtail. They were very abundant in the Cretaceous period in the location where this ember comes from. I hoped it would be a mite or a tick. That way we would catch a parasitic interaction from the age of the dinosaurs. As for the ant, this is Geratoformica ant, also extinct species. And judging from, from the abundance of legs of other ants, this ant had companions to keep her company during the fossilization process. Okay, let's see what we that was very neat, unexpected extra inclusion, basically a present, <laughs> two inclusions in one. This other one was so tiny that I basically don't see it with naked eye, like microscopic basically. Okay, we are done with the ants, now let's take another piece and maybe, maybe let's take a beetle and this beetle, bro, it has colors. Uh, but not that kind of colors which the first ant had. This one has some green coloration and some brown and some basically rainbow array of colors on the carapace on this beetle. And this kind of carapace is called metallic coloration. Very uh, exciting. Probably will look a lot better on this video than on the magnification because to see the colors we have to change uh, the direction the light falls on the carapace to basically shine back the colors that the microscope I adopt we will see many colors. Either way, let's just try and see. Yep, I was right about the colors through the microscope, there's a lot less of them. But oh man, this is fabulous specimen. It looks very similar to that of Pasala palpidae beetle, but it's a lot smaller and has metallic coloration on the carapace. And identification for it is a rough beetle, more specifically Chloe Harinaya, one of the absolute coolest beetles I had my hands on. Absolutely fantastic, I love this so much, but uh, getting some cool 
insects in amber is getting a lot more competitive than it was before to get some cool specimens. Either way, uh, today we have still like uh, seven pieces more to enjoy to see what's inside. And I guess, uh, let's take this super tiny flying insect. We, for today we have only one flying insect, super tiny, but the wings are gorgeous and preservation looks pristine. Let's check it out. This is Neuroptera from the family known as Berothidae. This fellow is one of the smallest species in its family, which consists of 24 genera and over 110 still living species. Very beautiful wings and eyes on this fellow, and beautiful creature overall, except for the larval stage, which looks like this. One of the tiniest, basically smaller than the fingernail, but one of the best preservations that can humanly exist in, in 100 million years old, old amber. This little Nortara still it looks still alive. It's insane. I love Ember so much, goddamn. Now, uh, let, because this one was so nicely preserved, now let's take a look how a little bit worse preserved insect look like. This one is gonna be dark. And I guess we might have some issues taking pictures. Either way, let's try our best. Let's get it on the plastiline. Let's light it up and see what we got. Now basically we have plenty of, la of light, but there's a lot of weird fuzziness going on inside. And there is uh, one trick to change that. So remember how this looks like. So in this case we have a lot of light. We have double illuminators which shining at the insect and we have extra LED light shining light from the side. And yeah, it looks fuzzy and weird, but when we change the background with the light one, everything changes. Voila, a little bit more details we can see when we have a white background. Because the piece is darker, we can see more details on it. And we can even uh, maybe fix uh, some of the issues of when refocusing on it. Oh, there we go. Some texture on the carapace and everything. Yeah, we will play with the lights to make better pictures for this one. And the result looks like this. A lot more details are visible now. Basically, we played with the contrast of colors, changing the background from mirror to white one. And this insect is a true bug, more specifically, Yuri Popovidaia member, an extinct family of true bugs from the Cretaceous period. All family members have crazy looking eyes. So this one is not the best preserved. Uh, when I'm making these kind of videos to make photography sessions for the video, I try to pick uh, the best insects I have at the moment. And even though this one not the best preserved, but it looks very alien and interesting and I decided to show, show this piece for you. Either way, uh, let's move on. Now, uh, yeah, I have two roaches. Both of them are larvas. Smaller one, this one, yeah, also not the best preserved, but it looks very interesting. Maybe we can get identification when we get better pictures. And we have another one. This one is miles ahead preservation-wise, but it looks very weird. It's so flat at the very top of the surface of the ember. Like basically, removing even one micron would damage this cockroach in this cabochoni piece. And yeah, even though it's like twice bigger than the other one, it is still a larva. Uh, adult roaches uh, are considered adults when they have wings formed. So this one is still wingless, meaning it's not yet adult. Yeah, so let's get both of them in their magnification and see what kind of species or order or family these roaches from time of the dinosaurs belongs to. This is the first smaller roach nymph. A bit dark, but still looks quite solid. Unusually wide abdomen section. At the moment I fail to get proper ID for it, so for now it is unidentified roach nymph. And this is the bigger nymph. I believe it's very close to being adult. Also, don't have ID for it, but I have interesting piece of information regarding nymphs and larvas. Did you know what is the difference between larva and a nymph? Larva is when insects will go through transformation or metamorphosis. It's when a baby doesn't look like adult at all, 
for example, caterpillar is a larva of a butterfly. And yeah, it undergoes a big transformation from a bugot basically into a beautiful butterfly. And nymphs is when baby is basically smaller version of an adult. It gets bigger, but there is no real transformation. It's basically it's basically the cockroaches. Next, let's check this piece. And from the very start, when I look at this piece, yeah, I see it. Wow, it's so tiny. It's like maybe one millimeter, maybe even less. It is a arachnid, a pesky arachnid, which all humanity combined hates. It will be a mite. For such a tiny insect, we managed to get rather decent photos, and it looks terrifying. Super hairy, four pair of legs, and sharp looking stinger. Fun fact, not all mites are parasitic. There are mites that live in soil and are decomposters. Some live in the water, others are predators that eat other insects, and the most hated group of parasites that feed from the blood of mammals, birds or reptiles. We are done with the blood sucker. I think the pictures looks quite decent for such a small sized insect. Yeah, this my cheap digital Chinese microscope doing really well. But of course, my pictures which you see and the end result are basically enhanced with software. I enhance the resolution, I remove the noise and I focus stack every single pictures. For this tiny arachnid, I did like 60 uh, shots to make one picture. So. Yeah, there is that. And now we have like three times bigger insect, but still tiny larva of probably a true bug. Yeah, even in this state, I can see his long proboscis. And this proboscis he was using to suck the fluids uh, or the nectar from the flowers. What an alien looking creature! It's Yuri Popovidae, extinct family member. And it's not a nymph. Much like the roaches, I can say that it is an adult, because it has the wings. But more than that, proboscis on this fellow half of his whole body size. What a crazy looking fellow. Once again, insanely preserved, super tiny, insanely preserved. The bigger the inclusions are, the worse preserved they usually get. I'm not sure why, but it is what it is. But science, uh, we mentioned flowers. Uh, when we're talking about this live specimen, let's go to the flower, which might have been a food source for insects like the last one, because we have gorgeous, gorgeous specimen of a flower. And yeah, it is the first time I'm holding flower in amber, like ever. And usually flowers are getting very oxidized because they have this million of different parts and fluffiness around them and they get oxidized really easy. And this one looks, this one looks insanely preserved. This is the best flower I have probably ever seen. Or one of them. Except it's tiny, but yeah, let's check the details because this one. This prehistoric flower is called not hope helica, but we the common folk call it the fire flower. And as I said before, it is my first ever flower in amber and it's an absolute gem. Usually they are very black and oxidized, but this one is in exceptional quality. When I get enough light for the picture, it changes its color to lighter ones. And there's a ton of fluffy stuff on this flower. Looks similar to dandelion seeds, except way, way smaller. This is literally nature's piece of art in the modern day. And there we go, uh, it's very sad, but it's over. We are all out of uh, amber for this episode. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more amber content. And I also do some fossil content and some fossil preparation, amber huntings and everything. And speaking of amber huntings, the season is beginning very soon. And I hope I can attend at least a few times to catch some amber for myself. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, check my Etsy page. I do sell some of the inclusions uh, in Ember. Yeah, go check it out. Maybe there's something you will like. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.